Latin America is in a period of civil unrest. Since the start of the year, there have been protests in individual countries. But since October, there has been mass demonstrations across the continent. In Guatemala, Haiti, Honduras, Argentina, Uruguay, Peru, Ecuador, Chile, Bolivia, Mexico, and now Colombia. Each country has had its own national trigger. But the common threads between the protests are economic discontent against austerity measures and a lack of social mobility, anger over the constant cycle of corruption scandal after corruption scandal, and number three, the influence of other successful global protest movements in cities such as Hong Kong and Paris. There is, however, one thing that has become emblematic of the Latin American spring. Take a look at these photos. Can you spot anything that looks out of place here? No? How about these pans? This may seem very unusual, but here in Colombia, those pots and pans are more popular than any witty sign or placard. So this form of protest, it has a name, of course. In French, it's en concert de casserole, or casserolas. And in Spanish, it's cacerolazo. Cacerola, the first part of this term, means pot or pan. Aso, the derivative suffix, denotes a hitting or striking action. It has been extended metaphorically to any sort of shock demonstration. For example, gol aso, which means a really strong punch. Cacerolazo then means a strike against the system by a pot and spoon. The history of this non-violent form of protest can be traced all the way back to 19th century France. The July monarchy, which ruled France from 1830 to 1848, was controversial, especially of course for the Republicans, who opposed it. They started banging on pots and pans in front of government buildings to jeer at the Crown and its public servants. In the early 1970s, the peaceful protest method somehow made its way across the Atlantic over the Andes and all the way to Salvador Allende's Chile, where upper middle class women started banging on kitchenware to protest the socialist government. Specifically, they were expressing their discontent with the food shortages the country was experiencing after US imposed economic sanctions. Later, after Allende's demise, labor groups protested Pinochet's dictatorship by banging on pots and pans from the safety of their homes under the cover of night. In 2001, well-to-do Argentinians took to the streets of Buenos Aires to express their frustrations with the country's economic collapse, when the Argentine peso's extreme devaluation caused many to lose their entire life's savings. In Quebec, student casserolas broke out in May 2012, after the provincial government introduced Bill 78, a bill that would place strict restrictions on the right to protest. This was in response to increasing student protests regarding university tuition fees. The Human Rights Commission eventually released a fierce condemnation of the bill, and after a government change in September, the controversial bill was repealed. In 2017, when Catalonians were getting ready to vote on their referendum regarding independence, 15-minute-long Catalolazos broke out nightly in Barcelona. Catalonians who were expressing their support for the independence were influenced by many Argentinian immigrants who had lived through the Catalolazos in 2001. And in Colombia, the biggest mass protests in over 10 years have also brought people's pots and pans out of the kitchen. Since the night of November 21st, the people have been making their own mark in the history of this peaceful but loud form of protest. It's not the first time people have banged their pans to express discontent, but it is the first time that it's become so symbolic of a wave of frustration being currently felt in the country. an effective form of protest? Well, the answer lies in its non-violence. According to a paper by Maria J. Stefan and Erica Chenoweth, major non-violent campaigns have achieved a success 
53% of the time, compared with 26% for violence resistance campaigns. The authors cite two main reasons for this. Firstly, a campaign's commitment to non-violent methods enhances its domestic and international legitimacy and encourages more broad-based participation in the resistance, which translates to increased pressure being brought to bear on the target. And secondly, whereas governments easily justify violent counterattacks against armed insurgents, regime violence against non-violent movements is more likely to backfire against that regime. So how does this translate to the Colombian protests? Well, the widespread use of the Casero Lasso has snowballed. The public has seen and heard the protests non-violence and thus engaged with the grievances brought forth by the protesters. More and more people have joined and a protest that was thought to just last one day, November the 21st, is now heading into the Christmas festivities with little to no signs of slowing down. As more people protest in Colombia, more pressure is piling on the government to make actionable change and meet the people's demands. Additionally, it's really hard to justify state violence against these peaceful protesters. Here's a clip from Erica Chenoweth, the author of that paper. They do strikes. They bang on pots and pans. They stay at home. They shut off their electricity at a coordinated time of day. These tactics are much less risky. They're very hard or at least very costly to suppress, but the movement stays just as disruptive. What happens in these countries once the dust settles? Well, it turns out that the way you resist matters in the long run too. Most strikingly, countries in which people wage nonviolent struggle were way more likely to emerge with democratic institutions than countries in which they wage violent struggle. And those countries with nonviolent campaigns were 15% less likely to relapse into civil war. The data are clear. When people rely on civil resistance, their size grows. And when large numbers of people remove their cooperation from an oppressive system, the odds are ever in their favor. Making this pot and this spoon the most important tools right now for Colombians seeking reform.